When I was 22, I was hired to teach high school science in Chicago. And uh, the school was just overrun with gangs. And I was a little thrown off by that because up until that point, my biggest exposure to gangs had been uh, West Side Story. <laughs> and uh, at this school, gang members didn't settle disputes by like having dance-offs in the hallway. What they would do is they'd take combination locks and they'd put them in tube socks and they'd swing and crack their rivals in the face. It was absolutely terrifying. And to be in these gangs, these kids just had to be loyal. So no matter what they were asked to do, whether it was fight or sell drugs or whatever, they did it because these gang leaders rewarded loyalty. And I didn't get that whole dynamic. I just wanted to teach. And the problem, though, was that my kids hated class, and they hated me very much. Every day they would just sit there and they would stare at me with this feral intensity, and I knew I had to break them like, like wild horses. And so I figured I'd do this through two key tactics, okay? One, I wouldn't miss a day of school. I'd be this ongoing positive presence in their lives. And two, every week I'd make them do team building activities in class. And that didn't land well at all. These kids who had just been arrested didn't want to play, you know, two truths and a lie or whatever with me. <laughs> but I persisted. And by never missing a day of school, I began to wear them down slowly. And it was like around Thanksgiving, I was having them do uh, trust falls in class. When Danny, who was one of my rougher students, he spoke up and he announced to the room that what we were doing was uh, quote unquote, kind of cool. And I knew right then and there that I had them. Right? That, that, that they were mine. I knew that I had, I had broken them of this gang mentality, and, and I had, because after that teaching was a joy. It was, it was great, I loved it. Life was good. Uh, but a few months later, I was summoned for one day of in-school training, uh, technology training. I was part of this committee that was gonna have kids create avatars online and then use those avatars to solve virtual ecological problems. It was, it was real stupid, but... <laughs> What this meant was that I was going to miss class for the first time, and there was going to be a substitute. And being a substitute is really difficult because, you know, kids act out often. And I was so worried that this was going to happen when I was gone. So the day before I had this training, I read my students the riot act, okay? I said, listen, the substitute is going to be a guest in our classroom. The substitute is going to be treated with respect. And if the substitute writes down any of your names for misbehaving, when I get back the next day, I'm going to send those students straight to the dean. No questions asked. And they told me they understood, and I felt good. So the next day, training started a little late. And I had some time in the morning, so I popped into my classroom just to make sure all was well. And my students, they were actually working, and they were quiet, and it was great. And they were overjoyed to see me, but I just gave them a wave, and I walked up to the front, I walked up to the substitute, and I recognized her. Because she was this veteran teacher in the district who was, who was retired, okay? She was a hard ass. She looked like, she looked like a Supreme Court justice, okay? <laughs> And I was so happy she was the one who was at the helm while I was away. So I went up to her and I said, hi, excuse me, I'm Brian, this is my class, I just wanna make sure everything's going okay. And she looked up from this romance novel she was reading. <laughs> and in a voice that sounded like she just like, ate a pack of cigarettes, she said, <laughs> I think I can handle it. And I said, oh, no ma'am, I didn't, I didn't mean it like that. I just, I've had some problems in the past, I just wanted to make sure everything, but she cut me off and she said, hey, Sorry, hey, <laughs> it's harder than you think. Hey, she said, I was like, huh? And she goes, uh, I think I got a handle on it. It's not gonna be a problem. You know why? Cause I'm not an idiot. <laughs> and I was taken aback a little bit and I looked over at my students and they weren't smiling anymore <laughs> because they saw how she spoke to me. And I saw something in their eyes that hadn't been there since the beginning of the school year. It was, it was that feral intensity. And they were, I mean, they were worked up. And I'm not proud of this, but I was so offended with how she spoke to me that I didn't try to calm my students down. And instead I just told her, okay, good luck. And then I turned to my students and I gave them a nod that said, I'll let you take it from here. <laughs> and I walked out. And as I headed down the hallway behind me in my classroom, I could hear voices getting louder and chairs scraping against the floor. And I kept walking. <laughs> out. 
And so after training, I felt super guilty. I felt like I should have done more to, to ensure that class had gone smoothly, right? But I was sure it had because the substitute was a veteran teacher. You know, she had years of experience. And I found her at my mailbox dropping off her report. And that was the first time I had ever seen a person whose soul was truly broken. <laughs> She just walked past me, this shell of a human, just gave me this vacant stare, and I thought, like, w what have I done? And on her report, she had written down every single student's name. It looked like the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> and it was littered with all these phrases, phrases like insubordination and refusing to sit down, and my personal favorite, constantly meowing. <laughs> And so I went to class the next day ready to reprimand all my students because they were in breach of what we had talked about, in breach of our agreement. And before I could, Danny spoke up. He said the substitute deserved it because she had disrespected me. And everyone else chimed in in agreement. And in that moment, it really hit me that I had never broken these kids of their gang mentality. <laughs> I had just taken on the role of leader. And it felt fantastic. And so, in the end, I didn't write up a single one of them. No one was sent down to the dean because, yeah, things got a little heated, but they were just being loyal. And like those other gang leaders, I rewarded loyalty. Thanks,